Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, we're going to be making a simplified version of the toolbox you see here that I made in a previous video. Hope you enjoy. So the whole idea of this video is to make an easier version of this tool chest. Obviously getting the laminated boards might be difficult for some people around the world. So today I'm going to be using 12 mil plywood for this toolbox. And instead of going with the dovetail construction for this to make it a beginner easy and friendly toolbox that you can make in just a few hours I'm going to be gluing and screwing the box together and in choosing the plywood it's important that you try to get a, as good a grade plywood as you can for this box because you don't want it warping and moving obviously the screws are going to be holding the main part of it together but I'm, we're going to have an unframed lid that's just the straight plywood on the top so a good quality plywood that's not going to delaminate on you is kind of essential. What I have here is red oak veneered plywood and that was just the best quality I could get. And this toolbox is going to be painted so if you don't like the way your plywood looks, uh, if it's going to be painted, the quality of it doesn't matter so much for the visual aspects of it. So the measurement of this toolbox is almost identical to the one you see here. It's going to be about 740 long, 300 wide, and about 300 high. Now this sheet is 600 mil, so after I've cut it down, it's going to be a little bit under the 300, 300 mil high, but that's fine. We'll just work so all the sides are the same height.
So, as you saw there in that little montage, we cut the two side panels and the two end panels and then squared them up. Used the shooting board to square the inside edges of the side pieces because they're going to butt up against the inside of these long panels here. And that's why I put them on the shooting board because they need to be square because we're going to be screwing into the end of that. The edges or ends of the long pieces can be tidied up with a hand plane after the entire box is put together. So now that that's done, the next step is to go ahead and screw the side pieces to the end pieces and actually form our box. Now you would have also noticed that I haven't actually cut this other sheet here to do the bottom and the lid yet. And that's because as you've seen me do when I did other projects and even when I did this box here, I like to take the actual measurement off the box to ensure that there is less area for things to go wrong. So after we've put that together, we'll then mark for the, the lid and the base. I'm going to make use of these corner picture frame clamps to hold it together while I initiate the screws. Because this is going to take quite a bit of weight, I want these sides to be nice and strong. So I think I'll end up with uh, four or five along each of the ends to ensure that it all stays together and doesn't fall apart. The screws I'm going to be using are these chipboard MDF screws. They might not be the most ideal, but they work quite well on the plywood when I've used them in the past. They take a number two Phillips head and they're 30 mil long, and that should be more than enough to hold this entire box together. The thing here is I've just got it rested on this side to stop it falling over so I can keep it relatively square. And I'm just going to fit these clamps to each edge to make sure I've got them in the right spot before I add the, screw, the glue to the boards and make sure that it's all lining up nicely. Slide this board out. Don't want to go too crazy with the glue on this. However, the end grain parts of this plywood will soak up a little bit more, so I like to wipe on two runs of glue. For those of you out there who aren't aware, when sizing your drill bit for your screw, you want to hold your drill shaft in front of your screw, and it should be the exact size of the shaft, the main shaft of the screw, and you should have the thread on the outside of it. You also want to make sure that you're making your drill bit long enough, especially because I'm going to be countersinking these. You want to make sure that you're going in far enough to allow for your countersink. In this case, I'm going to countersink a little bit deeper than I normally would. I want to make sure that head of the screws are below. So I'm going to go ahead and put my screws in now. So I want to come up a little bit here so I'm not going to interfere with any of the bottom screws that come in. So I'm coming up at least 30 mil from the bottom of the box. And I've come in enough that I'm going to hit the piece of plywood below but not so much that the head of the screw will go off because you want to make sure your head of your screw is going to go inside the timber. Make sure you're lining them up. What you can do is you can get one in like that and then bring a square in and actually run a little line so you know that that's the line you're going to drill on. You don't have to do that. Personally, I don't find it helps too much, but you can just align them by eye.
So now we've got the main carcass screwed together. We want to make sure that it's square. So I've come in with my ruler here and I go from inside to inside. This way to 770. Tip that into the corner there. And it is 769 the other way. So one millimeter is not enough and it'd be pretty difficult to correct one millimeter out anyway. Which means we can now move on and sit the box on top of the plywood and actually take our markings for the bottom and for the lid. There was just one other thing I wanted to mention on the bottom of the box, just in this corner here, when I was putting the uh, screw in, it actually punched the laminates apart a little bit and I had to glue it back down. The screw just got a little too close to the edge. So just be, be wary when working with 12 mil material that there's not a lot of space either side of the, the plies and it can force them apart if you get a little too close to the edge. for the top. What I've done here is I've finished cutting the bottom. I've got the top here ready to go. And the bottom here, I've just lined it up. Obviously, it's a little bit oversized, so we'll bring the hand plane in after it's been attached. So I've got this turned up. This is the bottom here. And I'm going to go ahead and start gluing and screwing this in place. So the box is really starting to come along now. With the bottom on there, we now need to attach the top. I'm going to line the lid up on here. You can see that there's a little bit of a bow in this piece. So what I'm going to do is turn it over the other way. So we're going against the bow and that means the top of the bow is actually in the bottom, which means that it's not going to affect how tight the lid fits. Just got this chromed or nickel plated piano hinge and a lot of people in my last video said that it wasn't secure putting it on the outside of the box and I believe they misunderstood exactly what this box is for. It's not really designed to keep your tools secure it's just to keep them out away from little hands because there's a lot of sharp objects and also just to keep the dust off your tools. It's not meant to be a secure box because a box like this is never going to be particularly secure. Just find the center So when I was editing here, I discovered that I didn't record my audio. 
So I'm just doing a quick voice over here. What I was saying in this particular section here is that now the lid is attached, I'm going to use some wood filler. It doesn't really matter what color because I'm going to be painting this with a dark color, but if you weren't, then you'd be caring more about the color of your filler. So I'm going to fill in the top of the hole screws in any little voids that have appeared in the side of the plywood, which did happen in a few spots here. And then I'm going to wait for that to dry, sand back the putty, sand the edges and plane the edges of the box, tape up the hinge and get it all ready to paint. The paint that I'm going to be applying today is this milk paint from Rust-Oleum. Although it's not a true milk paint, it's a pretty non-toxic paint and it goes on well for some furniture and stuff and has very little smell. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Now that the paint is dry, we could go ahead and add another coat of paint if you want to. Uh, this particular type of paint comes up a little streaky, so sometimes you might want to do multiple coats. But you would have seen when I was applying it that I actually did wait for it to semi-dry and then apply another heavy coat over the top. So it's essentially two coats in one, and I find that works quite well with this type of paint. But certainly there's still some streak marks of the light plywood that have come through, and obviously you could recoat that. You also have the option of putting a protective coating over the top of it, something like shellac or a paste wax if you want to, and that will also change the colour of this type of paint. Now that the painting is all complete, we can go ahead and add a few other accessories on here. We're going to add just a, a very rudimentary stay latch to hold the lid open. And I have a little lockable lock here that's going to go in the middle. I've gone ahead and attached the little lock in here. I've just uh, double-sided taped this little block in here for now, just to drop the height so it receives properly there. And drilled the little hole through on the top. And I'll glue this block in place later on after I finish the video. I've just got a few time constraints right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And now we're going to install a little stay strap here to keep the lid open at about this angle. So what I'm going to be using for that is just a piece of a bit of paracord. And I'm going to put a screw in here and a screw up on the face here and we'll just tie that up to hold it. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. We've got that screw there and we'll just put one in the lid. So what I've got here is about 600ml of uh, rope. I'm just going to do a quick tie off here. I will just say this was attempt number four with the correct length of rope. So just make sure that you 
cut enough rope. You want more than you're going to need, than you think you're going to need, and then you've got room to play with to adjust it. And there you have it. There's a stay to hold the uh, door of your box open. So, and if, if you have problems with it, you just need to push it in as you close it, and it holds it perfectly. Now you can adjust it to have the correct angle that you want on it, but for me, this works perfectly. It's a nice angle back, so you can access if you've got anything on the lid up here. Or if you're just working straight in the box, it keeps the lid out of the way. So there you have it folks. There's a very basic take on a very easy, low skill toolbox that you can build when you're first starting out, before you've learnt dovetails and before you make something that's a little more convoluted and takes more time, like the one on my right here. So, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, check out my Facebook and Instagram pages, and as always, if you'd like to continue to support me, please check me out on Patreon. Bye for now.